Three, two, one. Hey, Internet friends, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe, the Synergy Collaborative and Synergy Lifestyle Academy. And I've got Sinisa on the line, and he's over in Spain. You there? I am. I'm certainly here in Spain, Brad. Nice to see you. <laughs> it's good to be seen. It's a, it's a weird world we're living in now, you know? It is indeed. It's uh, changed everything upside down. I think we're going to remember 2020 as being the crazy year. Well, I was just getting, uh, I've got entrepreneurial ADD, so I'm always doing different things. And I was just getting focused on a new business, events, hospitality, travel, and tourism. And what happened? Okay. This that's, happened. that's exactly where I'm at. I'm okay. in... Uh, uh, travel mainly, bid in hospitality, hoteliering, events, and so on. So we're on the same track, I think. And uh, it'll open up. We just got to be patient. I think so, too. I, I try to stay talking to my colleagues in the industry and so on. And, of course, you have both. You have the ones that are saying it's difficult times and they... They hardly see the, the light at the end of the tunnel, but I always start to try to stay positive. I've been on Zoom doing a little bit of tastings, just talking about the regions that we have here around the corner, about the produce, about the wine, you know, about the future in general. And I think uh, good things come to those who wait. Well, I, was just, I did an uh, interview just earlier, about uh, three hours earlier, and... Uh, that's what we were talking about, a mind, the mindset of an entrepreneur. It's like, if it doesn't work, you just quit. No, you don't quit. You keep going, keep going, keep going. You gotta be very persistent and consistent and focused. Adapt and change, adapt the whole time. You gotta reinvent yourself. You gotta do new stuff. You see where the market is leading you. And uh, if it's changing, you have to change with it. So do you know the name Gary Vaynerchuk? I do. I think in the wine world, everybody wine knows Gary. Wine library. So he yeah. did some uh, music. <laughs> Phenomenal videos. guy. Phenomenal yeah. guy. Yeah. Well, there you go. You can just make it work. If you can't talk to people in person, you get on the old Zoom and make it happen, right? That's how it is. And I like it. I like it because you get connected with people in real time all over the world. You expand your network, your friendships, and uh, it's just a, a great way to uh you know stay connected and a entertain yourself spread knowledge and also accumulate knowledge well you never know what's going to happen i mean with your you do like winery tours is that what you do with a big motor coach come in with a bunch of people and you take them and show them the winery did you freeze up somewhat yeah we're doing we're working my company's sweet easy lifestyle and concept so it's sweet easy one word dot com and uh, we're working mainly with bespoke tours. We are not selling seats. We're working with homogenous groups, but the groups can be everything from two to three people up to, in our case, we don't like doing more than maybe 12, 14, although we have had groups up to 50 people. But I, mainly it's about eight people doing a six day tour. And then we take them around to visit uh, various wineries. There's about two or three winery visits per day lunch is out in the vineyards, uh, cooking uh, together with a chef or with an old Spanish uh, abuela, which is a grandmother. And uh, it's just a, you know, a lovely, lovely, lovely time to spend with people and show them around and so on. So we're doing it all over Spain, but also in Portugal and Croatia. Since my, my name is Inisha, it's a Croatian name. My heritage is from Croatia. I speak the language, so we do things there as well. And among some of the concepts in Croatia, we do something called which is really cool. We uh, I didn't, have I didn't, a sailboat, it's a hear, catch rig. I didn't hear that last, the internet cut out. Okay, so oh, the last okay. bit, what I said was that we also do in Croatia is a new concept that we're doing, it's called wine and sail. So anyone who likes wine and anyone who likes sailing, we join that and we do uh, oh. sailing trips from uh, Split, which is midway on the Dalmatian coast and through the Adriatic, visiting six different islands, getting down to Dubrovnik, where Game of Thrones, of course, partly was shot. Uh, and we visit uh, wineries and we eat uh, dinners on the boat. We have live music and so on. So it's really nice. And small groups, eight, ten people on a gullet, which is a Turkish-built, uh, catch-rigged, uh, wooden uh, motor, motor sailor. Well, that sounds like fun. Do you, do you do, like, 
corporate groups and stuff too, where the corporation might take their upper management people and, and reward them, that kind of thing? Incentive travel is something that we do, conference travel as well, uh, MICE, MICE incentives. Uh, so we work with all, all of that. We've had uh, companies from the States, we've co companies, mainly we work with Scandinavia, but we've had guests coming all the way from California. We've had people from Chicago. We've had people from uh, Dallas, I think, Houston, and so on. Wow. So yeah, and for the companies, of course, it's a little bit different, but uh, we do everything. We set up the wine tours, we do cultural events, we do guided tours of uh, older uh, cities like Tarragona, for example. Yeah, so the, for those that don't know, MICE, I believe it stands for Meetings, Incentives, Conventions, conferences, and expositions. Conferences or con congresses and events. Yeah. Mice. Because some people don't know that. You got mice on the boat? What's you that? that? We don't want yeah. mice. <laughs> yeah, I produce a trade show here in Minneapolis. <laughs> no, on the boats, you only have brats. <laughs> I produce a trade show here in Minneapolis for the event planning world. Okay. Um, so we get a lot of the corporations. You might have even heard of some of them, like Medtronic, General Mills, Pillsbury. Um, Best Buy Corporation, Cargill Corporation. Okay. They're head headquartered here in Minneapolis. Yeah. And they come to the expo to find all the different resources. Of course. And it's good business. They like paying, but they also like good service and they like something special for their clients for incentive. Yeah, I'm keeping my finger on the pulse of what's going on. And there's a lot of people that are kind of like, I want to get back going. I want to do some stuff again. And they want to do the cruises and all that. And they're impatient. Wow. Well, oh. Wow, the cruise liners, they're going to have a hard time, I think. I'm, again, I'm trying to stay positive because we, have, we live not far from Tarragona port, uh, which is 20, 25 kilometers from here. So we have a lot of cruise liners coming there. We're one hour from Barcelona. And of course, Barcelona is a hub for Mediterranean travel with cruisers. So we have sometimes people coming on the cruisers once a day, half, want to do half a day or a day out in the wine country. We pick them up and we go. Uh, but considering you know the tight spaces, uh, the accumulation of people on, on the big cruise liners and also buffets, let's see what happens. Uh, I've heard now that it might uh, go faster than we think. That already maybe. In August, September, we might have some cruisers uh, going around the Med. Well, I think this is this uh, virus thing is going to go just as fast as it came, in, in my opinion. I don't think it's going to be, this isn't the end of the world. I think we're going to be okay. <laughs> I think it's good also. I think, uh, I mean, good. No, it's not good because people have died. But people have died throughout history and they're going to continue dying. And we're all going to die at one, one time, yeah? So uh, it's not good per se, but it's here and then we have to do the best of it just try to you know like we said re reinvent ourselves and, and and look for new ways to do business interaction socialize uh, and so on and yes the spanish flu uh many hundred years ago that that kept for three years but nowadays we have more science we have better health care and hygiene so like you say i believe maybe a year and then it's gone and then there is a good part about this too, is it's, it's forced people to be innovative and come up with new ideas. I've got a, a magician friend, he wanted to continue to do his magic shows, so he created a package, he called it uh, Turf and Tar, where he does, he does the magic show in your front yard or in your driveway. <laughs> Maintaining social distance, everything yeah. is safe, and people can still enjoy his magic, phenomenal. Exactly. I love it, yeah, very nice. You can make it work. Yeah. Are, are you still, are you actively doing tours right now? No, we stopped, uh, we did our last tour uh, beginning of March, and then we had a big tour planned for end of March, around the 26th, I think it was, up until the 3rd of April in uh, Rioja, Ribera del Duero. Those are two uh, adjoining wine regions in the north of Spain. And we had a big group coming from Sweden and so on, but uh, we had to cancel that one because of the of course the pandemic and the restrictions and travel and so on and since then we haven't been doing anything uh up until the 8th of june which was uh monday not this week but last week so about 10 days ago we started with uh, some small visits to our next door neighbor 
because our house is in a small village called Brafim, and just next to us we have one of the best vermouth producers in Spain, uh, Padroco, which is phenomenal. So we've already had some guests coming, and we're just doing those visits at that uh, Casa Vermouth Padro, which is very, very uh, exciting. It shows you how vermouth Vermouth is elaborated, all the different botanicals that go into the beverage and the aging in the barrels and so on. Very special visits. Well, uh, so, so we are capable of coming back and that's good that it sounds like you're opening back up again. But uh, on the topic of like the alcoholic beverages, I'm, I'm, not, I'm a non-drinker myself, so I don't even consume. But the concept of uh, Basically, like wine, it's just grapes and it puts in a barrel, and the barrel sometimes isn't it sometimes like um, I think I saw some stuff with like whiskeys where the barrels are like burnt on the inside, so it gives it a whole different different flavor. Is that similar yeah. in the winery? It is. I mean, in terms of, of whiskey, which of course the production of whiskey it's a spirit, so it's distilled, so that's very different. But then the aging in barrels is similar. Uh, and those barrels sometime uh, that are used in whiskey come from previously been used for wine production. Oh, really? So basically yeah. what you do in terms of wine, you, you pick your grapes when uh, it's season for, for harvesting, which is normally here end of August and throughout September and into October. You pick the grapes and the grapes are then, defined, depending if you're making a white wine or a red wine, fermented and macerated with or without the skins. In the case of the red grapes, the skins give the color because the inside, the pulp is white, both in uh, green or white grapes and red grapes. And then once it's fermented and then you can ferment it in the barrel or you can ferment it in stainless steel tanks or whatever other container you wish, it depends on the winemaker. And once process has been done, the maceration and the fermentation, which can take up to 28 days, 26, 28, depends on the yeast and on the temperatures. And then you uh, simply press uh, a filter and then you, if you decide to do aged wine, you age it. And then in terms of the barrels, you have something that's called uh, uh, medium toast, uh, uh, light toast and uh, heavy toast. So you have different types of toasting of the barrel, which you were referring to as, as burning the barrel. But in essence, it is burning the barrel, but they call it toasting. And that is to either close up pores, depending on how you do it, or open up the pores. So uh, it's a lot of technique there. Barrel makers are uh, highly sought after. A good barrel these days from France of oak, made of oak, is upwards of 900, 1000 euros just for the barrel. Really? Wow. Yeah, <laughs> it's fascinating. That, that, those are some of the fascinating things I find with that whole, that whole industry, the, the variables, because like you start putting this stuff together, you don't know what kind of results you've had for a month, right? No, because you have a constant evolution. And wine as a beverage is not static, like uh, some alcoholic beverages or even beer. But wine is quite uh, active in terms of, of evolution, and it always changes. Oh, really? As and how long it goes in aging, yeah, yeah. And even even after you bottled a, a wine, it can change depending on the closure, depending on storage, depending on time it's uh, spent in the bottle. Wow, you got to be a scientist. <laughs> well, a lot of people that work with wine actually sometimes they start out with uh, agriculture or science or uh, methodology in terms of agriculture and science and also being so many years and then they evolve into what's called an enologist which is the person who's making the wine so there's a lot of chemistry biology involved in it and of course also it touches history and culture because uh, there's a lot of that. I mean, winemaking goes back 8,000 years to the Caucasus, Georgia and Armenia, uh, where they say that 8,000 years ago, archeologists and scientists 8,000 years ago, they say they produced wine there. And then it spread, of course, through the uh, antique Greece, uh, the Roman Empire, and slowly, slowly it made its way. I mean, even in the US, you had uh, wild vine, uh, during the the okay. Europeans came there, so uh, 
Yeah, I was saying, I'm sorry if I caught out, maybe the connection is not the best here for my village. Uh, I was saying, I think about the US, that even in the US you had vine long before the Europeans came. So even the Indians in the US had something that's similar to the European rootstock of Vitis oh, wow. Vinifiera. Yeah, there's a winery here. It's a, I'm in Minnesota, but it's over in Wisconsin, over the St. Croix River. And what's cool about it is that it's all the, the grape vines and things all out there in a field. And what this guy did was he laid down a, car, a big concrete slab, and then in one corner of it, he put a little kitchen in there. And it's a restaurant. And you, it's a really fun experience. You drive your car out in the field and park wherever you can find a place to park it. And they've got fires all over the place. You can sit and wait before you're, because it's very busy. But it's very, very affordable for a guy to put a restaurant by just uh, laying down a slab of concrete with some tents and, and umbrellas and then a little, little oven kitchen to prepare the food. It's yeah. Fascinating. Oh, there are so many, many fascinating wineries to visit and you don't have to be a wine drinker to enjoy it. I mean, some of the wineries even offer uh, for kids and people who don't like alcoholic beverages, they offer a red wine must or a white wine must, which is totally non-alcoholic. And people just come along for the experience and some wineries, like you say, have additional experience to talk to turn so food and so on. So there's all of this, you know, connecting people. It's what I like about wine. Well, it is a fascinating beverage. I mean, there's uh, basically there's coffee. That's a popular one. But the wines, there's such a spectrum of the different, yeah. the different uh, like price points and all that stuff. I mean, you, you go into a liquor store and look at all these different, all the different labels, and it's just mind-boggling. It is. It's a phenomenal product, and it brings people together. Absolutely, a little socialization. Yep. Maybe a little less of that right now, but soon we're back to it. But they can still zoom. <laughs> they can. <laughs> Cheers. There you go. I don't have one. I got, that won't work. Oh, <laughs> not even coffee or tea. It's no. still early for you. You know what I say? I, I always say it's always 12 o'clock somewhere in the world. That's what they say. You just got to, and it's all just a concept anyways, you know? <laughs> so Sinisa, I don't like to do these too long because people have that commodity of time. So let's uh, pull this together. And do you have something that you can offer anybody? Maybe you've got like a, a PDF download or a, how do they get, how do they find your website? We have some, of our, some of our programs have been explained on our website, which is www.sweeteasy, sweeteasy, one word, dot com. And uh, the email address is wine at sweeteasy.com. So just get in touch with us. It's not wine, it's wine, like the beverage. So W, and people get in touch with us. What we do is we do everything bespoke. We do everything tailor-made. So people get in touch. We send over PDFs with uh, previous programs that we've done, introduction to the wine countries of Spain, Portugal, and Croatia. And uh, people, if they get in touch, we will answer all the questions. We try to be very punctual in that sense. You know, we have this mentality here in Spain, mañana, mañana, which means the next day, the next day. It, it's going to get sorted. But we're, uh, my wife is Swedish. I'm born and raised in Sweden, although I, I have Croatian parents. Uh, but we have the mentality of doing things immediately, you know, taking care of business, a little bit more that American style, uh, and Scandinavian uh, and Swiss, I would say. So, so yeah, so people can certainly get in touch with us and uh, we'll be happy to help out. And even if they don't travel with us, we're always happy to, uh, happy to share, to give advice, to let them know how and where they can find information or how and where they can travel here and how they go about traveling here in Spain and in Europe. Well, I will figure that out. My wife loves Spain. She lived in Valencia, I think. Yeah. Valencia yeah, on the coast further south and um, and uh, she speaks fluent Spanish because she was a Spanish teacher at the University of Minnesota for 30 years so maybe we'll make a trip and come and visit 
you should come over. You're you're invited. Welcome <laughs> over. We have a big house. We have plenty of rooms with cats and dogs. And uh, you know, as long as you're not allergic or afraid of dogs you're, or cats, you're always welcome to stay with us. I'm not. We I'm have people from all over the world coming. I'm very healthy. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. But you have to learn to drink wine, though, Brad, or at least try. I can do the non-alcoholic stuff. Perfect. Then I'll set you up. Okay. I have some non-alcoholic, actually. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, Sanisa, thank you very much for spending the time at Synergy Cafe. Thank you. Peace. Pleasure to be here, and thank you so much, Brad. Talk to you soon.